Hey guys, Lucas from My Explorer here. Today we're going to do some street photography in Ikebukuro at night, which is our classic stomping ground here. And today I want to talk about AI art and kind of how I feel about it and kind of the philosophical implications. I have a lot of thoughts on the matter, so I want to share that with you guys. Um, of course, if you want to support the channel, check us out on Patreon, or you can go to iExplorer.com and consider checking out our uh, photo spot map that we offer. We've been offering it the whole time, but we didn't really talk about it because it's not relevant when you can't travel to Japan. But now that you can travel again, check that out. And, you know, maybe you'll book a workshop if you're in Tokyo. That helps us out, too. All right, let's get on to the video. I explore. So, AI art, right? Now, I'm probably kind of late to the party because it's already been a few months that this stuff's been going on. Um, I made an Instagram post about it. Some of you might have read that post. It was a little bit inflammatory on purpose because uh, I wanted to get people's attention. But basically, my overall feeling is that this whole AI art thing, yeah, it's cool. It's cool technology. But I don't think it really changes much what I'm doing as a photographer and as an artist. And the fundamental reason is that um, there's, you know, I'll get to it eventually, but basically I can say right now that I just think that doing street photography like this is a more authentic endeavor than like just typing prompts into a computer, right? So ultimately as an artist, I'm seeking authenticity more so than I'm seeking to create beautiful images. But, um, but how do we get to that? So, First of all, when I'm thinking about what AIs can do and what they're creating, you, you know, and some people might take issue with this, and it's fine, we could, we could have a debate. I'd love to have a debate about this because this is an interesting topic to me. Let's go this way. And that is that by the definition that I hold, and also I think it's the, the one I've read in the dictionary, AI art is not art because it's missing a, an element of consciousness. So let me read the actual definition that I looked up in the dictionary here. Um, just, to, just to have that on the record. So, the definition is this, of art. The conscious use of imagination in the production of objects intended to be contemplated or appreciated as beautiful, as in the arrangement of forms, sounds, or words, right? The first part there is the key part, the conscious use of the imagination, right? And to me, that's really fundamental to the whole thing. When you prompt an AI, it's not imagining anything, right? I mean, you could, you could try to say it's maybe imagining something, but the way the, um, you know, the GPTs and the, the diffusion and all that stuff works right now, I wouldn't call that imagination, right? It's kind of like a statistical model, more or less. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, computer scientist, but I just, I think that's what it is. I don't think it's like consciously being creative. Plus, it needs to be prompted, right? There's no like volition or, or you know, effort there that just sort of spontaneously comes out the way it comes out of a person. You know, I wake up and I say, I want to go out and shoot. I want to go create something. I just do that. Sure, there's some extrinsic motivations you can say, and I'm obviously not existing in a vacuum. I, you know, I live on this planet and I'm surrounded by people, so I'm inspired by the work of others. You could call that similar, right? But um, I think there's a difference there. Now, having said that, if in some you know, distant future or near future, who knows with this technology, if somebody creates an AI that is conscious and does just spontaneously on its own make decisions to create this or that or whatever, I would call that art. But when you're prompting the machine to do something, neither you are the artist nor the machine is the artist. And that's just an idea that or a contention that I hold. I'm I, I not convinced. Um, in the end, they're just pretty pictures, basically. They're just cool looking images, but they're not art in the sense that I think what art is. But more so than that, I feel like this whole AI movement that you know, we're recently experiencing is just like another step in what has already been happening with art, which is a commodification of art. Meaning that so much what, of what we consume as art out there is already kind of, you know, in a sense, stock and repetitive. And let's go, let's go this way actually over here a little bit. And you know, people are often kind of copying each other and I've done it too. I'm not always capable of creating something truly original or unique. You know, sometimes I just do something derivative. It's just a commodity. I'm just cranking out kind of similar stuff. Um, let's shoot, I'm gonna shoot something right here. And this might be something that I've done before. So let's call this maybe a commodification right here. But I just like the, uh, I love when these shutters, you know, are like this, they reflect the light. And then the people are going around that corner. Let's see here. Yeah, there's a cool light over here, maybe with this, like, this sign. But this shutter's not the coolest one of these shutters. All right, it's not that great. I'm not going to wait for more people. But let's keep heading in there. And so, you know, the idea that, like, an AI can crank out 
you know, unique but sort of similar images again and again and again based on a prompt. Or millions of people who are all, oh, wait one second, there's a shot here maybe. I know people are already going in. There was a guy, there was a guy back there, but he went into an elevator. So either a, you know, a machine can crank out all these similar images, you know, even if they're unique, but like once you give it a prompt, it could just continue to produce images with that prompt, right? That's what I mean. Um, but in the same sense, when you take thousands and thousands of people or even millions of people, for example, on Instagram, photographing the same places, the same things, you know, there are spots in Tokyo that have been photographed to death. And I photographed them too, like uh, the Shibuya crossing from above, from the rooftop of Shibuya sky. And everybody produces somewhat of a similar images. There are some uniquenesses there, but it's a little bit of a commodity, right? And I like to always say that my, my favorite street photos that I've taken are those unrepeatable ones, those ones that even if I tried, I wouldn't be able to take that photo again because the moment was just too special, too, you know, singular. Unless I guess I staged it, right? That would be another way to do it. Um, and so, yeah, and then I also feel like that kind of brings me to the next point that at least with photography, this is why I feel like despite all the AI stuff, photography in fact kind of is gaining in sort of social value in a sense because it's one of the few art forms that is, in a sense, tied to reality. I mean, yes, 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 you can Photoshop an image. Let's go this way. You can Photoshop an image, you can doctor it, you can edit it, and whatever, but you are actually going to a real place. Um, this isn't, you know, maybe, maybe it's not so obvious on video, but this isn't a simulation, right? I'm not on the holodeck in Star Trek. This is reality I'm walking here, right? I can smell the street. It's really hot out here. It's noisy. It's a real place. So when I snap a picture, even though it's digital and everything, in a sense, it's something real. Now, it's not a one-to-one -one recreation of reality, right? There is still something kind of, I guess, in a way, fake about the photo, but it is sort of a real thing. This is a cool bicycle, and it's very well lit here. I'm gonna get a shot of this thing, right? I just like how it's lit with all these things. It's, I don't like that it's parked in there, but you know, whatever, good enough, beautiful. So yeah, so like take this bicycle, for example, you know, it's a real physical thing. This moment happened, right? It happened right now. It may happen again, but even if it happens again, it won't be exactly the same, right? So there's some substance there, that kind of bit of reality. And that's something that when you're creating um, art that's not photography, you know, like just drawing or something, it's not quite the same because, you know, and don't get me wrong, I, I do believe if you're, if, you're, if you're an artist drawing something, or illustrating it or doing it digitally, that's art. Because again, it's the conscious use of the imagination to create something, right? But I'm just saying that there's this kind of like, you know, this, how do I say it? It's, photography is in some sense tied to reality. Whereas other art is, can be, but it can also be completely tied, just completely from the imagination, purely from the imagination, right? Um, now, of course, that's not necessarily always the case, but just saying that the possibility is there. And then AI, in that sense, is also just kind of purely fabricated. So, as people maybe lose trust in images, this is my point of why photography is more valuable, I feel. As people lose trust in images over time, because there's more and more of these fabricated images, then these authentic images, meaning photography, somewhat gain prestige or gain value in a sense. Maybe I'm just lying to myself, I don't know. But that's kind of how I feel about it. All right, maybe we're gonna shoot a little more around here, a little bit more light here. I thought I'd be like talking and shooting, talking and shooting, but I ended up just going straight into this rant, which is something I've been thinking about for a while, rolling it over in my head again and again. Um, so I just wanted to kind of make all that, but I still have a few more, a few more points I'd like to make, a few more examples. Um, but first let's shoot a little bit, let's see, because this, this is where Ikebukuro gets really nice and interesting, at least this part of it. We're on the east side of the station here. And um, let's see, I'm just going to use some cool light. Yes, ka? Arigato. I don't really like what people post for me, but they smiled and I was just like, okay, I'll just take their picture. Why not? It's not a great picture, but it's okay. All right, there are a couple cool streets around here that we can explore. Let's go um, into this little alley here. <laughs> Maybe we'll find some cool side street activity. Those of you, you know, who kind, of kind of watched me shoot a long time might notice that I'm using the flip out screen. Since I've gotten this camera, I'm using this a lot more. It's really, really useful. 
Um, I mean, it goes with that. I mean, obviously, right? It's not a shock that it's useful, but I just find myself relying on it a bit more. I feel like it allows me to get a little lower. And I like to think it's kind of like in the, in the good old days when people would, would shoot like, you know, top view viewfinders, like Rolleiflex cameras or some Hasselblads, for example, like medium format. You know, you would shoot like this. You would look down into the camera, except it would be upside down and reversed. It's kind of like that, I guess. It's a pretty comfortable way to shoot, actually. Let's see here, there's a guy in there. I don't know if he's interesting or not. I can't really see him too much of a curtain in the way. Nice view in this direction, although it's, you know, a little bit devoid of human activity right now. Getting back to the uh, topic at hand here, I think um, I also want to bring up an example, and, and this is something else that I follow. I'm, I'm, I don't know, I never mentioned this, but I like chess. I follow chess, right? I follow the you know, the famous players and what's going on in the chess world, and I like to play sometimes. It's not a serious thing, but it's just a, a hobby that I have. And uh, we're going to go in this little street as well. And, um, and chess is a realm that has been long already dominated by AI, because even like a regular laptop could run an AI system, a program, call it an engine in the chess world, that can just like destroy even the best players in the world. So you'd think, if AI is so good at chess, that like, what's the point of you know, people playing chess anymore, right? Because the computer can do it so well, what's the point? And yet, people still play tournaments. And in fact, using the AI to play is called cheating, right? Because the point is that we, as spectators of that sport, and you could you call chess a sport, of course, but whatever you want to call it, um, we want to see human to human competition. We're not interested in seeing AI. And of course, you can watch AIs play against AIs, and sometimes it's fun to watch a human try to beat an AI, but we know the outcome at this point because the humans are just so so much weaker than the AIs, right? So we just want to watch people playing against people because that's where the drama is, that's where the excitement is. Um, I'm going to go over there, actually. We're going to go in there, but I want to shoot one thing over here. I love this door, and I love how it reflects the colors back there. Um, let's see here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. Ooh, that's cool. That light turned on up there. That's pretty neat. There's this cool dichotomy between the white building and the dark building, kind of a, you know, two worlds, black and white, almost kind of a yin-yang effect. Maybe get a little closer. I'm gonna go back to shooting the door in a second, but this light might turn off, so I might as well shoot it while I can. Cool. Yeah, you know, could an AI do better? Probably. <laughs> there's some beauty here. There's some subtle colors. There's the lamp. It's probably good enough. I think. I think. It'd be cool if the light was on higher up the building. That would help my framing. It would move it away from those trees. Okay, let's go back real quick to shooting this door because it's uh, it's pretty cool. I didn't. I don't feel I got what I really wanted out of it. Maybe a little closer. Beautiful colors on the door. Let's see how they look even closer. I don't really have the best lens for this. I wish I had actually a longer lens because these reflections usually look better from farther back. I wish the sign was it on the door. Okay, let's do one more thing then. So the sign's in the way. Let's just get super close because it's all about these colors and textures and stuff for me. I'm gonna focus on this lock. And I like that Nikon added this nicer shutter sound, the fake shutter sound. It's still fake, but it's a little bit more attractive than the other one. 
Of course, I don't use the shutter sound at all on my own, but for the purpose of the video, I think it's good. Beautiful colors there. Wow, those are gorgeous. That reflection is fantastic. Let's get one more here. Cool. Am I happy with it? Probably could never be happy with it. This is kind of a tricky one, but that's good enough. So getting back to the topic at hand, which is, well, I was talking about chess, right? And so long story short, to summarize that point is that in the chess world, even though AI is so good, we still watch humans creating art. And I feel like it's the same thing for, or sorry, it's humans playing chess, right? And, but you see, that's what I was gonna say, is despite AI getting so good at creating pretty pictures, right? We still, I still at least feel I'm interested in watching, or you know, not necessarily watching humans create the art, but in looking at art created by humans. Because I'm more interested, more than in the pretty picture, I'm interested in the, you know, that individual's desire to create. I don't know how else to phrase it. Like everyone has a different reason for creating their art and different things that interest them. And those unique perspectives are what to me make the art interesting and ultimately what I call authentic, right? It's something that comes from within. Sure, it cannot be 100% purely intrinsic. There is always some extrinsic motivation and influence and whatever. Nobody operates in a vacuum. But I think that's the crux of it, right? And then AI, you know, anybody who touches that AI can prompt it the same way and it will produce kind of different things or whatever. But it's not, it's, there's nothing personal about it, right? And AI didn't suffer for years to figure out their art form or, or learn in the school or whatever. Here, let me try a little reflection shot over here. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work. Yeah, it works, but there's really nothing going on. Recently on this little alley, they, they changed, ooh, wait, 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 before I ramble on, ah, he moved away. There's a little subtle silhouette up there in the window. This is maybe where a, a longer lens would be better, but oh well. Not bad. But anyway, recently they changed these uh, lamps. They made it more colorful, these little square lamps. They used to all be yellow. And now they added all these other kind of hues and tones. And they sort of illuminate the area in these other colors. So that's nice. What I love about this street is that you can see, you know, the street itself. And then um, Sunshine 60, this tall building in the background there, it always looks really cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we've, we've shot a video on this street before, almost for sure, because this is one of my go to spots in Ikebukuro. Yeah. See, can an AI replace that? I don't think so. I don't think someone with so much passion, yet complete lack of ability to sing, could sing like that. And by the way, I can't sing, I can't sing to save my life either. So it's not like, you know, I would be even worse than that. In addition to chess, I mean, another example that I had in mind is like, you know, I also like, I like fighting sports. I like watching UFC and in the old days, I used to like to watch, you know, Pride or something like that back in the day. And like, you know, dopings, for example, or any kind of sports, it's, it's not allowed, right? And it's the same kind of thing. I mean, like, we want to see, at least in, in competitive, in competition, right? Like, you know, art is not a competition in my opinion, but, but in competitive things like sports or chess, we like to see people, you know, compete against people because th that's exciting to us. There's a drama there, you know? It's not that exciting to see a machine just do it really well, right? You could probably build a robot that would just like murder a fighter <laughs> somehow, especially if there was no rules about, about that. Just like you could build an AI that can defeat anybody in chess. Let me see here, sometimes there's an interesting uh, little moment in here. No, not really. Yeah, so in the end, yeah, that, that kind of, that, you know, that battle, right? That drama, that excitement is what makes it authentic. It, Right? It makes it exciting because we don't know what's going to happen, right? We cannot, be, we cannot predict the outcome. And so we love that. I've actually eaten in this place before. Really good grilled fish. Yeah. Would, a, would an AI stand on a rainy corner on a super hot muggy day in Ikebukuro and wait for something to happen? I don't know. I'd like to think that it wouldn't, at least right now, it wouldn't do it on its own accord. And that's the point. It might do it if somebody told it to do it, 
but it wouldn't do it on its own. And that's the missing piece, right? That's what makes it authentic. Now, I will say, do I succeed always at making authentic art? Absolutely not. I fail all the time. To create something that, you know, you can feel is truly authentic is extremely rare, in fact. But the effort matters, right? Being able to, you know, putting in that effort and trying to create authentic art, I think, is, is important. And, um, and so, yeah, so I guess that, I mean, that kind of sums it up to me. And you know, I just want to also say that I'm not against technology or, or the, the whole AI art thing is incredible. Like, it's really cool technology. It's amazing what, what can be done now. I mean, it's really cool stuff. And I think it'll get better. And I think there's a, there's a place for it. It's a useful tool, right, for like quickly prototyping things or quickly creating concept art or whatever. But to me, it doesn't replace the artist because ultimately, you need an artist to, to make that decision, right? To, to, make, to make conscious, creative choices about something, right? And yes, 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 you could say that, yes, but the prompts uh, require some creative input. And I mean, I don't deny that. So it's not to say that maybe AI art is 0% art. It's not like a black and white thing. It's like a sliding scale. But it is like 1% art in there, meaning you got to prompt it the right way, blah, blah, blah. And then you have to choose the right image because it produces a bunch of junk and you choose the ones, you know. So you're kind of like a, you know, you're sort of like a director of the AI. So there's some creativity involved, sure. Is it as creative as completely from nothing, illustrating an image? Absolutely not, in my opinion. That's, it's not nearly as much of an art as that. And then photography is somewhere on that spectrum as well. Maybe it's not 100% pure creativity because you're reacting to reality. And then, of course, I'm using digital tools to, to finalize these things, to edit the photos. But at least as, as far as I feel along the way, I mean, in, in my opinion, I am constantly in charge, I am making these creative decisions. I'm saying frame it like this, frame it like that. I'm thinking I'm gonna choose these colors in the edit or not, I'm gonna use this white balance or that. You know, I'm choosing the settings in the camera. I'm choosing where to go and where exactly to stand, which is a big part of photography, right? There is nothing that's just happening in a black box, which is what it is with AI right now. And those black box decisions that are completely out of the artist's control, that's to me what removes it from the realm of art and just turns it into the realm of, yeah, a pretty image, which on its own, is not art, right? So yeah, I think that kind of summarizes my point there. Uh, let's walk around the block a little more. Maybe there's something else that my uh, natural intelligence can figure out to shoot. Wow, there's like a vine growing up the building and then there are flowers on it. Let's check that out. Let's go into this parking lot over here. There used to be, by the way, a really old house tucked away in the corner here. And then a few years ago, maybe two years ago, they tore it down and just expanded the parking lot, which is kind of sad. It was sort of funny because the, the house had all these signs around it that said like, no idling here. Meaning like if you park in this lot, keep your engine off because obviously it's annoying for the, for the owner. Wow, this is gorgeous. This is so cool. Look at these beautiful orange flowers in this dingy parking lot with this like backlit fluorescent, you know, light coming out of the window. Is it just me or did like a light turn off? Ah, there's a giant LED screen up there. Okay, so it got a little darker. It'll come back. Because it got a little darker, I believe, just a moment ago. That's super cool. I mean, wow. I love this kind of stuff. I love when plants sort of try to take back over the, the city here, the inorganic, right? Organic and inorganic. But even the synthetic parts have an organic feel to them because they are old. This is gorgeous, and the lighting is beautiful. I wish I could be a little higher up, but it is what it is. And you see, something like this, to me, I, be, I feel, you know, not to like be too proud or, or arrogant or anything, but I feel like this is authentic work because I'm interested in this, but I don't think many other people are. And it's not to say that you, you can only shoot things that other people don't shoot for it to be authentic. That's not necessarily the case. But that is kind of a good barometer. Like if you're really sort of following your own, you know, you're on your own journey and there's not a lot of other people on the same path, you can be sort of feel safe that like, this is sort of authentic work because I'm interested in it, not because other people are interested in it. I'm not just like seeing somebody else do it and then doing it myself, right? Um, which by the way is okay. It's not, it's not wrong to see someone else's work and then sort of follow that path. We all do that, that's normal, right? Um, but eventually, you know, through the process of, of you know, not copying, because that's the wrong word. I'm not trying to copy, 
but through imitation, right? You're just you're trying to learn, right? Through that process, you eventually find your own your own paths and ideas. Let me see from the front here with the window just fully backlighting. I wish there was more flowers on this part of it. Oh, that's beautiful. I could climb up on this badass Jeep. That would get me a little higher, but I mean, just look at this wheel. It's like up to my hip is gigantic. What a monster. What a monster of a car. Oh man, okay, let me just, I know I'm overdoing this. I'm shooting it to death, but I really want to like, I don't know, I want, I try, I'm trying to encapsulate the whole thing. Oh, oh, these colors are great, quick. It's not the perfect framing, but that blue was beautiful. And I'm going to redo that real quick, just redo this shot. I'd love for that blue to hit it. That blue is really cool. Oh, come on. Am I going to give up? Oh, I'm just going to give up and then I'm going to go home and I was going to tell the AI to make it. Easy. No need to struggle. Come on, just a, one more time. That beautiful splash of color would be so good. Uh, okay. Axel is literally sitting down on like a yellow, you know, barrier thing taking a break that's how that's how long i've been standing here trying to shoot this okay let's move on let's get out of here but you see see that that to me is what art is about it's about that struggle and that you know effort that you have to put into it and then sometimes you fail anyway or you succeed but only partially and you're sort of dissatisfied and you have to go back and try again and now that i know that's there i might come back in a couple of days and try it again because i live around here but also i might come back and the flowers will be gone and stuff like this and um, I've had so many times where I, like, I missed a cool opportunity because I thought I'll get around to it and then something changed, like a neon sign disappeared or you know, used to be there and you know, whatever, that kind of stuff. That to me is what makes art art. This whole, this conscious effort of trying to be creative, right? And using your imagination and conceptualizing things. Um, if a machine just spits it out, what is that? That's just, that's a commodity, right? That's like, whatever. And um, does that mean it's less pretty? No, but does it, to me, it, it has less value. And that's what I'm ultimately getting at. It's a useful tool, just like commodities are. They are useful tools, but they are not something that I cherish or value very highly. I rambled a lot, probably repeated myself a bunch as I do, but uh, tell me what you guys think. I mean, you know, go in the comments, let me know. Call me an idiot, tell me I'm totally wrong. I don't know. This is purely just my opinion, right? I mean, it is something I hold true. I, I believe this firmly, but I'm also open to have my mind changed. Like I said, if, if technology comes along and, you know, you know, let's go out on a limb. Let's say somebody builds a robot and the bot can pick up a camera and it can walk around the city by itself taking pictures of real things. Hey, that, then it's a photographer, it's an artist, and that's fine. Um, but I feel like we're quite far away from a, a, an artificial intelligence machine that can make those decisions by itself and by itself make, you know, use the imagination to create. I think we're far from that. I think just creating an image by some statistical algorithm is not enough to constitute art, in my opinion. But tell me how you feel about it. Leave a comment. Ask me any questions you might have on the matter. I'm um, happy to discuss it. And uh, yeah, of course, please check out our Patreon and all that. Check out the map on our website. Book a workshop if you're in town. I'd love to, we could talk about this stuff face to face. I've definitely had this conversation before with people on workshops. But anyway, thank you so much for watching today, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. And remember, always challenge your eye.